Hi, I'm Crafty Patty. My daughter wants this great big painting for her living room. It's huge. So I am going to do a Dutch pour. So keep watching and I'll show you how I'm going to do it. Or I hope I'm going to do it. first thing I want to do is I just want to protect this and keep it nice and clean. So I'm just going to match up my edges here and go along the whole canvas on the back side and just tape it off so this will stay nice and clean. I found these great big push pins at Staples and so I'm going to put those into my corners on the canvas so it lifts it off the table. And I'm just doing another test to see if my canvas is laying fairly level. For this painting, my daughter chose the colors. So we're working in a different array of different blues and a bit of metallic gold. What I did for my colors is I had these old bottles. So I wanted to make use of them. They're just squeeze bottles. And what I did was I squeezed out this whole tube of artist loft paint into the bottle which came up to about here. Then I added about half of that amount of Floetrol. And then what I did, I kept adding water until it was the right consistency. And I did that with all of my colors. I'm using metallic cobalt blue, turquoise, Brilliant blue and the metallic in the Pibio. I don't know if I pronounced that right. I never pronounced that one right. My last color, I chose to use some Phthalo Turquoise. And this is an Opus store that is local for me. This is a fluid acrylic. This time what I did, Floetrol up to about an inch from the bottom of this little container. I then added the phthalo turquoise color. I mixed it in it until I liked the color that I wanted. And then again, I added the water to get the right consistency. This was a pre-sample I did just on a little tiny board because I wanted to see if I liked the colors. And um, I think we'll be fine with those ones. So this is kind of the combination of what you'll get with those colors. So this will help to extend and cut down the cost a little bit to get this whole big canvas covered. And what I did was I did two parts house paint, one part Floetrol, and added water to thin. If you are going to use your flood Floetrol in your mixture, it does settle, so make sure you do give it a good stir or a good shake first. And the other thing I do is I pick up a little kitchen sink strainer and I strain it because I have had it get globby and you don't want that showing up right in the middle of your painting. So this is the house paint I've poured in my big container here and if I put it to the bottom I've got about an inch here so I'm going to do about half of that of Floetrol so I'm just going to come up a little bit more and add my Floetrol probably just below that line there. And this isn't an exact science. It's not like if I went above the line or below the line. It doesn't have to be perfect. Some people don't even use Floetrol. But the reason I'm using Floetrol is because this is one big painting and it'll just help to extend it and let it go that little bit further. All right, so we'll just mix this up. I won't be using silicone to make any cells or anything for this particular painting for the Dutch pour. But what I do do is I spray all the inside of my containers before I mix paint in them. So when I go to clean them, they're just a little bit easy to clean. So I just spray it and then wipe it out with a paper towel. So there is maybe a slight residue of silicone, but 
Not very much. So don't know if you can see this or not, but I'm trying to get show you that when it comes down, it does form a little bit of a pattern on the top of the paint. That tells me it's a bit too thick. I'm going to add more water, a little bit at a time. It won't take much. It's sinking into the paint. It's not sitting on the top. That's what I'm looking for. Okay, so I don't know how much it's going to take to cover this. So this is the one I already mixed up. I'm going to add that in here, and then I can always pour it back in the jar if I don't use it all. Okay, here it goes. I'm not sure <laughs> who's more afraid, me or the viewer. I'm just going to use my blow dryer on cool to move this paint and flood the whole canvas. So you probably can't see from there, but I do have some big air bubbles, so I am going to torch it and get those air bubbles out of there. And I'm just using a culinary torch. So let's just come in here and let's have some fun. Pop a little bit of white in here too. And I'm also gonna maybe try some circles. I'm going to come up here and surround my areas with more white. Thank you. 
Now with my blow dryer, I'm going to blow the white over the paint. Okay, now we can get a little more crazy and blow harder. But this time, I think I'm going to use a block so I don't paint my whole house. Just noticing that the, the gold was sinking down a little bit because I did make that a little bit heavier. So I'm just going to come in and see if I can pull some of that gold out just a little bit more. My daughter wanted some gold accents, so I'm just coming in and just placing a little bit of gold and I'm just dragging, dragging it through to make it look like it's part of the painting, just to break it up a little bit with the blue.
There's definitely some cool areas when you when you look closer. That's a pretty cool area. There's the other corner. Got some cells. And up at the top corner. So I've had this huge painting drying for a couple weeks because it was pretty thick and I just had a piece of cardboard from an old Ikea box actually and I taped it together so I'd have a dust cover. So let's remove it and let's varnish it. I've removed the painter's tape from the back side and I'm just going to add my pins back in so it's sitting off my board here and then we'll get to the varnishing. To varnish a large painting like that, I use a car sponge. I actually got these from the dollar store. And I'm going to be using Liquitex Gloss Medium and Varnish. So what I'm going to do is just wet my sponge and then squeeze out as much moisture as I can. So now it just has a wetness to it. It's not dripping. It's just nice and wet. I'm going to pour my Liquitex directly right onto the sponge. And I'm going to go over and start varnishing my painting. So you just come right in with the sponge and go right over. This is the way I find I get the best coverage and even coverage. As soon as I've done one section, I'll just come in and add a bit more. And do the next section. Once I've done one way, I'm going to let this dry and then I'll come back and I'll go in the opposite direction and finish my varnishing with my second coat and then it'll be finished. <laughs> 